All right, and we're live. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here if you're joining us. Um, uh, we'll just kind of start off with some intros and then we can jump into the questions. Um, welcome to Open Office Hours. My name is Jacob Miller. I'm the marketing and brand manager at Headway. Um, so I help with all, all the marketing efforts, You know, whether it's YouTube here, all of our blog content, email marketing, stuff like that. Um, I, help, I help make it all happen. Um, and so if you have any questions about startup marketing, product marketing, stuff like that, copywriting, um, I also can help answer those kind of questions. Um, but otherwise, I'm just here for support and to make sure the show goes smoothly every single time. Um, and we do this every single Wednesday at 11 a.m. So if you missed it this week or if you're watching a recording, you should have joined us uh, next week at the same time. So subscribe, get the notifications turned on, all that kind of stuff, and you'll be able to join us each week. Um, all right. So I can hand it over to Andrew and you can introduce himself too. Thanks, Jacob. Yes, yeah, so I'm Andrew Verbencore, partner and CEO at Headway and, you know, really have um, a lot of experience to bring to the table here from product design and also even on the development side. And so day to day, you know, work on aligning with potential clients at startups and also corporate innovation teams to really figure out how do we build new products with less risk, more confidence, and, and ultimately more traction? And so excited to to field some of the questions today. And, you know, really, we're an open book. So anything, uh, as you're tuning in live, any questions you have are, are on the table. So thanks again for joining us. Awesome. All right. So I'll kick it off with a question. Um that I found on Reddit. And I, I think it's a pretty common problem that a lot of people face. Um, and it comes with, you know, comes with uh, just the idea of validating, validating something, talking to customers, right? Um, so this first question is how to actually get user interviews, you know, and they're getting stuck. So they share, so I've been trying to get my first set of user interviews. And so far, I've hit all dead ends. I got one interview from a person that hit the product concept or that the product concept applies to. Uh, but everyone else is essentially cold messaging or emailing. And while I've gotten a couple of what are your questions, you know, as a response, once I sent questions, I never got a reply in the message may even may never even get opened at all. Um, I maybe sent eight messages or emails so far. Um, and, I've acu and I need to accumulate about 50 emails by the end of my semester for the incubator program that I'm working through. So their big question is, how do I get a uh, how do I do better to get a higher response rate or just be better at this ge in general? Yeah, good question and, and very common for people trying to get folks uh, on the horn to really learn about it. I think a big thing is really, you know, instead of saying I have a product I'm working on, really try to look for people that are talking about the problem they have that your product may or may not solve or your business may or may not solve. So I've seen this done successfully on Twitter or on forums where somebody's voicing a concern. So really, you know, trying to find communities and in, in places where people are talking about you know, the problem they're experiencing that you may be able to help it, you know, help them with. But I think for us, like the big thing here is really focusing on that problem. I think, you know, we've used other sites as well. So organic reach is one thing, um, you know, finding people on networks and on communities. Um, I've also used Craigslist to some success as well, depending if they're local or remote, really just finding people that, that you might want to talk to. Um, I think one of the other things you know that we use is called respondent.io and so there are incentives that you can align with people just to have those conversations it sounds like you're um you are in an incubator program right now or yeah for the end of the semester that you're working through um so if you're in school that might not be you know that might not be a opportunity for you to actually pay to be able to talk with people but essentially you know trying to f to start with the problem and, and figure out who's talking about it what are they saying about it and i think you know for the most part if somebody's pretty passionate about it to the point where they would actually um, tweet about it or post on a message board or post on reddit or you know a niche community they likely would give you, you know, 10, 15 minutes of their time to to really talk more about the problem. And they're probably um, talking about it because it's valuable to them or, you know, very frustrating. And, you know, it being solved could potentially be of a lot of a value, a lot of value. We actually have an ebook that that we sent out with a lot of scripts and things in here um, or, or in the in the book for the startup guide. And it was called um, how to communicate the value your product provides. I believe that was the title of it. Do you remember, Jacob? Uh, we can look it up, but essentially like a lot of scripts yeah. and interviews and things um, where you can, you know, offer incentives. I know Kate, Caitlin Burgoyne, does that sound familiar? I might be butchering the name. 
you know, there's some examples uh, that she has in her in her book and on her site uh, of just how you would reach out to people on Twitter. Uh, you know, some really good examples and templates on on how you would leverage these kind of frameworks of asking you know people to to retweet or if you know anybody that does this. And a lot of them can offer incentives, but um, most people, if the pain's big enough about about their problem they have, um, they'll talk to you for free. But kind of depends on your timeline and horizon on you know, when the end of your semester is and how, how quick you need to uh, accumulate the feedback from those folks. Yeah, sorry. I was like, while you're talking, I'm like grabbing all the links to things just so people can check them out. Um, yeah, so the, this we I, ch I added a link to Respondent. Um, I added a link to um, our ebook, the Communicate Your Product's Value, how you can reach out to customers. But I think, uh, yeah, Caitlin, her... her um, her content is incredible. It's all focused on talking to customers. So she actually has a website called Customer Camp. Um, so if you're looking for like cheat sheets, you know, and worksheets and like uh, templates for emails, all that kind of stuff, you can find it there. So I'm going to share that in the chat too. Her, her, she's a great person to follow on Twitter as well. Um, so you'll be able to find all of her info on customercamp.com. All right. Yeah, Albert. It's, it's oh, important. Okay. Go ahead, <laughs> sorry. Say, it's important to you know to note that um and i think they do a really good job at customer camp of talking about it but you know whoever can learn the most from their customers wins so not necessarily mm -hmm. like one time hey before i launch my startup getting user interviews and then never talking to them again but really building in these feedback loops that include uh customer feedback you know along the way every week you know if you've gone too many too many weeks or too many days without talking to your customers you're likely misaligning expectations and i think a big thing is that uh the market continues to change and other competitors continue to change as well so yeah um albert it looks like do you want to chat with us on the call is that what you're asking for with the zoom link just want to confirm and then we can we can share a link. We're actually not using Zoom. We're actually using a tool called StreamYard. Uh, it's been really fun because it allows us to share the comments like this that you're seeing on screen and have the little it's called a ticker on the bottom with the information. Um, so if you can confirm that, yeah, you'd like to join the call, um, we'll send you a link uh, to, to StreamYard for you and you can ask your question live. All right, cool. Yeah, I think um, when it, you know, I think even just that 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 process of like learning how to reach out to people and just get get their attention, um, I th you know it's, you're gonna fail through that. I think I don't think there's any like it's never gonna be perfect. Like every single person is gonna you know follow up with you and and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think the more you do it, the better you get at it too, right? It's yeah. not gonna just it, even if you have all these cheat sheets, it still takes a little bit of you know that effort over time to get better at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the same as if you were marketing a product, like going where your audience is and trying to find them, you know, it's easier than just going to a stadium full of people who you have no idea if they have the problem or not, and then trying to get them to engage with you, just different. So making sure you scope down and can understand who you're trying to target and what feedback you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, we're waiting for Albert to respond uh, and confirm that he wants to join. Um, we can we can uh, go to this next question. Um, it's kind of interesting, actually. Let me go back to the right here. All right, this one's up from Reddit. So this person actually has an idea for a live startup pitch platform, and they it looks like they have some information here. I don't know if you can see this in on the Notion page, Andrew. It's pretty long, but they they're wondering, you know, how to validate this this product. You know, what would be a good way to see with this if this thing actually works before fully developing it. Um, so I'll, I'll just kind of cover a little bit of what, what he shares or this person shares on Reddit. Um, my product is a website where startups can go to schedule a live pitch in front of hundreds of investors. The aim is to shorten the time it takes for a startup to get in front of an investor to, and to allow investors to see startup teams in their raw form without all the hassles, you know, scheduling call meetings and all that kind of stuff. Um, we do not have every detail worked out, but we do have a basic concept and design. Um, and a lot of people ask, is, isn't this like Kickstarter? No, because it's live. Um, will the actual investing be done through the site? No. So it just allows the connections to happen. Um, do investors have time to sit and watch pitches? Yes. There'll be a, apparently there'll be a schedule, some sort of schedule that they can go and they can watch the live streams and be notified. Um, and then if the investor wants to invest, they would just connect with that specific startup or founder. Um, and it looks like how will the site make money? Startups will sign, can sign up for a free slot or they can pay for like a premium slot. So probably like to pitch sooner or more. Maybe it's like a better time of day or something. Who knows? 
I'm sure they've been trying to figure that out. But their biggest thing is like, how do they validate before building it? They get a lot of good feedback. It seems like investors are kind of 50 50, like with feedback, but startups definitely are confident in like that they would want to be a part of it. So I guess, yeah, I don't know, Andrew, what your thoughts are on like, how would you kind of like validate this thing? Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like the the software doesn't need to do anything complex other than match people. So you could even do this with a web flow and maybe a member space. Um, you know, you could do this with Bubble. Essentially, you you want to take the next step. Like you've done a really good job in connecting with um, startup founders. Like yes, they want to they want to see more investors. They want to have more options, and investors most likely want more deal flow. Right? They're making decisions. Uh, at any given time for investment relative to the other decisions on their plate, right? It's never just an absolute, hey, this was great or not. Um, it, most likely it's, hey, based on the deals we're going to do this year, is this one of them? Um, and that's some of the decision making that that they'll undergo. And so I would I would say, you know, use some manual tools that are out there to really build a list of founders and also build up a list of investors that are interested. And the fastest way would even just be to do it over Zoom, right? To to gain interest um, from both of those parties and set a date, let's say two months down the road, where you can start building up startups and founders, or you know maybe that's too far out depending on, on how uh, many connections you have, but really create an opportunity for this value to occur. And the outcome really is startups get to pitch to investors, investors get to see startups. And if they're interested, you could concierge and send out the, you know, appropriate uh, information where it's just a manual, you know, match on your end where, hey, they're going to come to pitch day or demo day or, or however you want to frame it. And then after, you know, they can just ping you and say, hey, we're interested. And that way you can track, right? So you could have a little bit of a, a form or you could set up a type form with all the companies that participate and say, hey, investors, if you're interested um, in talking to any of these, just select from this from this drop down and I'll send you an email and you can even automate some of that follow up really quickly with like a Zapier um, where it gives them access and, and whatnot. So I think the big thing is just how do you go from this hypothetical conversation world into a chance to give someone an opportunity to walk through that door and say, hey, yes, startup founders, I'm interested. I'm actually going to um, sign up for a pitch. I'm actually going to show up to the pitch, right? All the things you need to, to worry about is if people sign up, are they going to follow through? Same thing with investors. If they commit to coming to a demo day, you know, let's say you got 25 investors, how many of them actually came in? And of those 25 after the pitch, how many were interested in startups? Because the outcome at the end of the day for both of them is startups want funding, investors want you know more deal flow and, and to actually find companies they're going to invest in. So if you can find manual ways, um, that'll help you learn more about the mechanics of the business and really the personal elements of, well, why didn't people show up or what happened with calendaring and scheduling and, and really uncover a lot of the things that you would have to wait a long time in order to uncover if you built a product with a lot of bias in it. So that would be my recommendation is to really peel it back. And if the, you know, if, if your idea is a live pitch in front of hundreds of investors, you know, trying to get the hundreds of investors and also get, you know, the founders that are going to converge on this event since it is live, whether it's on your platform or on zoom. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think like it, it's it, it's all about gathering that evidence, like you know, fr from both parties, like showing startups that it's successful, showing you know the the investors that it's successful for them. Like I think a lot of people, a lot of people want that, but hopefully you can find those people that are willing to take that, you know, that that kind of jump with you and believe in you and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, for sure. I mean, like you said here, some of the jobs um, or some of the ways people are solving investor jobs are they're spending time on Kickstarter and on Reddit and they're they're spending time on these places. So, you know, by you creating this convergence event or saying, hey, we have our first demo day for investors. Their question is, well, how are they vetted? Right. Is it just anybody? Can anybody just sign up? They want to know like they're going to have some level of quality and you're only going to learn that by, you know, creating an opportunity where they can either say yes or give you what objections they have or concerns they have and say, well, can you send me a roster beforehand? Like, how do I know who these founders are? are these first time founders, right? They're, they're going to have a lot of different questions that you're not really going to know if you wait and build the software. Um, so you're going to want to answer a lot of those behavioral questions and, and whether or not people actually show up. All right. Looks like we have Albert in the, in the back here. We'll, we'll add him to the stream. Okay. Well, welcome Albert. What's your, how can Hi. we help today? Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, this is, I think this is my second time um, of joining Headway. Um, I joined in some other time and it was a great experience. I was going through a YouTube channel and then I came across, I think YouTube recommended. So I got started with Figma and all of that. So first of all, great job guys. For oh, thank you. I've been helping the community a lot. So I, I have a question. Um, I'm really struggling with um, a feature that I'm supposed to build. So um, I'm building a, a note-taking application and what I'm supposed to do is to, when I highlight, is that like a PDF or EPUB sort of. So when I highlight, I'm, I'm actually gonna want to show you an example right now, send a link to a similar one that I'm trying to build. So the Bible Gateway has this kind of like the Bible quotations and everything. So what I want to do is when I, I, when I highlight a word, maybe God or something, it should be able to display the options where I can add notes, edit notes, and kind of like highlight it and bookmark or star the particular um, word that I've highlighted. I don't know whether I'm, I'm clear or I'm making any sense. So I've sent a link uh, right away. I, I think it, it really tells what I'm trying to achieve. And I've been struggling to achieve it. Uh, I don't know whether there is a package that I can use in React. I'm using, I'm going with React actually. So uh, I thought you guys could help me out to give me some ideas of where to look. Yeah, I I think you can actually share your screen if you would like to to share it with us. Oh, all, that, right. Yeah. all right. Yeah, I mean, I can share it too. But if you want to share and then just maybe point out what you're talking about, that would help okay. us a little bit more too. All right, then I'm sharing it now. Awesome. All there right. we go. Just, this, okay. All right. I'll, I'll add it to the stream here. Just one second. All here. right. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So this is uh, this is so I want to be able to. This is the app that I'm I'm working on actually at the moment. So this is the app that I'm working on. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So for now, it's just a raw. So I just kind of like just put this in there for now. I'm yet to upload a PDF. So this is what I want to do. So you, you come here, right? So when I highlight like this word over here, I get this little thing over here where you can change the colors mm -hmm. to the colors and then you can maybe start them or something and then you can, I can click here and then I can be able to type whatever notes I want to add. I think that is all the question that I want to ask and I've not been able to figure it out and how I can do that. So I was thinking you guys can point me some directions or send me some links or something like little count. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know there's different options. Are you using any front-end frameworks right now in React? Um, yeah, so I have not really, um, I, I was looking at React PDF, but um, I have not seen something like this or what I really, really want. I have not seen it, so. It's it's and I don't even really know. I'm not sure whether they, I, I don't think they use PDF to display this because I I check and I don't really see anything that's so it's yeah. My guess is yeah, just text on the page. Are you planning to OCR any of the PDF text or just kind of are you trying to keep it in the PDF itself and then export you know export um, whatever the edits are on the platform? Yeah, I'm trying to keep it within the PDF. Gotcha. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's something, I know we've looked at some different libraries and we have some similar use cases. I'd have to check with John, to, uh, who's our CTO, to get some of those over to you. But I know like one one path, uh, depending on if you wanna change the text or just highlight, is kind of layering objects. Mm -hmm. So you would essentially, you know, absolute positioning certain things. Um, the other option is if you were to OCR the text using, um, I'm trying to find, the library um, for it, but using almost like a wiki builder that gives you some tools. I know there's some open source um, okay. rich markdown editor. So it really would depend on on what you're trying to, you know, all do within the PDF itself. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, and also, um, so this like this, so, when I refresh the browser, I still persist and it gives, so I'm currently logged in as after. And so 
the idea is that also when I come to I sign in or something, no, it's even gone. Yeah, the idea is that when I sign in, I should still be able to see what I have done over here. So I start this side and then I also highlighted this section. So it really, um, I'll, be, I'll be very glad if you guys can just get something and then. Uh, otherwise, um, I would like to get your Twitter handle or something. I can send you a DM over there so that when you have some time in your hands, you can probably, um, yeah, yeah, send me some links or something. Yeah, yeah, that's something we'll, we'll probably have to dig a little bit deeper into. Um, but definitely, okay. yeah, different ways if you're if you're working with the text or working over the top of the PDF. No, um, no specific libraries come to mind right now. I know Outline, um, getoutline.com is actually a wiki editor, and they've uh, oh, okay. I know we've looked at looked at that for different um, different potential projects. But they've open sourced essentially all of their editor code that includes highlighting, includes like mm -hmm. um, note taking, includes adding comments to specific things that you highlight and things. So there might be some things that are close there or, or a subset oh, okay. of out, outlines open source. Um, and here's just a link. Okay. Um, some open source uh, from their documentation tool that you might be able to reapply here. And I, I believe it is based on React. Um, but if you okay. go to their community outline link uh, here, Okay. Um, on GitHub, you should be able to dig into kind of the Markdown okay. editor and, and some of their can code. You, that... Can you please send a link to me, please? My... Yeah, yeah. And we just dropped those into the YouTube. Um, the YouTube, will... okay, okay. Link, link comments, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, so um, <laughs> that is all I have for now. And yeah, I'll definitely give you feedback on whatever it is. Uh, yeah, definitely, I'll definitely give you feedback on that. So I yeah, really, really good. appreciate um the efforts and everything you guys have done for me like i'm so super excited so yeah yeah thank you yeah, so thank much thank you thank you albert yeah. and if anyone's anyone's watching this feel free to ping albert here on youtube or, or drop a comment if you have any experience with any tools that um might work for albert as well so thank perfect you. thanks albert all right thank you too all right Awesome. That was great. Awesome. Looks like we have another question from Selena. Welcome back, Selena. Always good to have you with us every week. Um, so Selena has a question about um, uh, Figma impl implementation. Um, is curious how we deal with highly stylized tables with a lot of rows, having issues with the cells that grow. Oh, yeah, because the, co the YouTube comments are limited with character count. Um, grow with cells that don't Figma has no real flex box. So I'm stuck with auto layout, any best practices or approaches you found. Um, and I did ask, you know, if, Selena, if you want to join us on the call, you definitely can hop in and we can try to like figure this out together too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to read both again here to just to make sure I'm understanding, but mm -hmm. yeah, auto layout is part of it. I think, you know, if your columns aren't growing, but your text inside of it are, you know, then um, using auto layout will be helpful. But I think if you, you know, if you work out with some of their scaling issues, like let's say you're scaling a table, basing, basically being able to pin something to the left or to the right, you know, you might be able to split up your table um, if you're trying to answer concerns around, you know, responsive design for web, for tablet and for mobile. Um, but if Selena, if you want to call in and share. Yeah. That'd be helpful. Could even share screen and all that stuff too. Um, awesome. Well, the link's shared out. We'll, we'll wait for Selena to jump in. But uh, thanks again, everybody joining us on the call today. It's been it's been awesome. Um, uh, if you have a question, you know, be sure to throw it in the comments, and we'll get to it as soon as we can. You know, as we're as we're helping everybody, we also try to be mindful of our time. You know, we don't want to spend <laughs> fifteen minutes uh, on uh, one person. We want to make sure everybody has equal opportunity to get their questions answered. Um, so just try to be mindful of that uh, today. Um, oh, Selena, I put the link in there um, to join on StreamYard because you'd be able to like share your screen and everything. I put a comment in there. Awesome. Um, as we're waiting, we have a couple events coming up this month. I know tomorrow we have um, Jacob 
he bear is going to be talking about some headless CMS options. So like what are the platforms available out there? If you're looking to uh, build some CMS stuff, um, he'll be walking through all that. Cause I know our team has been doing some of that, like a contentful and, um, and a few other platforms. I'm not super familiar with them, but he'll be walking through all that kind of stuff. Jamstack, all that, all that, all that jazz. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for him to share that with our community. Um, and then uh, we'll have our team week next week. So we'll actually be um, our whole team. Uh, we do this a couple times a year, but our whole team takes a, a week off to invest into each other, um, work on projects and, and, and all sorts of stuff. Oh, looks like we got Selino joining us. All right. Welcome, Selino. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Right on, man. Uh, so, uh, jump into that question or try to clarify. So, again, I, I found stuff, especially uh, with plugins, for making very basic tables, like very large, but basic tables in Figma, pretty easily. Like, I can import a CSV and get it done super quick. But when you've got like a super highly stylized table with lots of like badges in it and status messages, text that grows vertically, not necessarily horizontally, because on, on the horizontal axis, I'm, you know, filling uh, the space, filling the the, uh, the available space so it's it grows and shrinks. Um, I'm, I just can't figure out, should I be building this with like, row by row or column by column or am i totally off the mark yeah the way yeah the way that we've built them out to be most extendable is row by row because then that gives us that ability to have an auto layout container containing the rows so if uh -huh. your height grows you know uh -huh. those will continue to grow with it i don't know how that works i think you were mentioning at the beginning um actually importing data from a CSV. I don't know how well those all play together. Right, um, right. You know, if you're trying to do both versus if it's, you know, just designed manually, like how responsive will it be to the input that gets injected through the plugin or, right. you know, we've used Google Sheets a lot. And so yeah. usually trying to control the data or clean it up um, has helped. Otherwise, yeah, you might run into some odd edge cases. It sounds like you might be. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, uh, willing to get rid of a lot of convenience <laughs> for having it working, <laughs> yep. you know, so like the import stuff and the, all that, I, that's secondary to me. Um, it's really about being able to replicate. And then, you know, this is like in the design system context. So I'm supposed to be telling other people how to make these tables and I can't get my tables to work. <laughs> You know, yeah. Yeah. So, are they? Is is your number one issue? They're scaling both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because um, I've got at least one column that where the text has to wrap. The name, the location names get really long, and I'm supposed to be showing the most amount of data on the screen. So scaling vertically or pushing things down vertically has to work. And it just seems like whether I do it with rows or columns, either way, I'm doing a lot of zooming in on a cell and lining it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is, I is think... that common? Like, like I have to I have to line up the headers with the rows on the bottom, They're, like with yeah. fixed widths, right? almost two, yeah, almost two, two components, like lining those up, you know, having a header row element and then having a content row element together. Uh -huh. um, but then each one of those being kind of componentized, right. With its own, yeah. with, so like how, how parented is that? Can, are you able to show an example? Um, um, let's see at the moment. No, I, I'd have to, yeah, I, I haven't even started. I'm in, I'm in California. So it's like nine 30 here. I haven't even gotten coffee yet. I got, uh, no I got, way. I got your alert, your YouTube alert. Just so you know, I got your YouTube alert and I jumped up and I turned on the phone and I turned on the TV to get into this. So I appreciate you guys greatly. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. If, if you want to actually, you know, once you get plugged in, if you want to just send that over, like okay. share, you know, even if you just pull it out, I know, you know, we don't need access to your file, but if, even if you pull yeah. that out and just invite me uh you know to the file would love to just take a look 
Um, and okay. then I can also drop in an example, you know, so just a standalone file with those elements. I can drop in in, in some examples of tables and rows that we've created to, to try and solve that same thing too. Yeah, that would be cool. So uh, let me jump off of this and then go on my machine and, and try to jump back in. Awesome. All right, thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks, Selena. Yeah, thanks, man. Awesome. Yeah, I, I know that exact feeling. That, like, I also watch YouTube on my TV, and then you're like, wait, I can't share my screen. I'm on my TV <laughs> and my phone. Um, not that I've ever jumped on a live stream, though, from my phone. Um, but, yeah, I definitely could understand that. So, awesome. All right. Well, I think while we're waiting for him to jump on his computer, get his coffee, all that stuff, um, I think we can jump over to another question. I don't see any other questions yet in the chat. Um, but if anyone here is on the live stream and has a question for us, you know, throw it in the chat, just like how we had Selena on before we can, we can add you to the call and we can talk through a problem that you might have. So, all right, let me get, uh, oh, actually, no, Peter actually has a question. Here we go. Uh, do you answer questions about basic career roadmaps? We can definitely talk about career roadmaps. Um, do you have a specific question about i mean what i guess what is your specific career path um it's actually something that we're at like figuring out together as a team at headway like how our how everyone across our team um grows and what their career roadmap is individually so um uh happy to answer that happy to like have you join the call and to talk about it uh, more freely and candidly so um here, i can share that link again for you in the comments and then you can hop in and we can talk through it. Um, and while we're waiting for Peter to respond, um, I'm trying to think what I was talking about before. Oh, well, then Peter's responding more, more basic than career roadmaps. I think we're waiting for Peter to. Oh, looking to get into learning testing with Jest. Does Jest change a lot depending on what kind of stack environment you're working with? They're very technical. Yeah, I'm familiar with Jest, uh, Peter, but I don't. Ha yeah, I don't have hands-on knowledge with. Yeah, that. Peter, um, I don't know if know. you've. Yeah, I don't know, Peter, if you've seen our uh, uh, our friend Chris did an awesome presentation at our office before COVID about. Um, uh, testing with Jest, actually, just kind of an intro. Um, got it. Okay, well, I'll, let me just grab that um, YouTube uh, link for you with Chris's. He's got an introduction to like testing a React and, and using Jest and stuff. Um, it's actually like one of the top. Um, it ranks number one in YouTube, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, a lot of people really enjoy enjoy uh, enjoy it and leave positive feedback about it. So I'll share that quick with you. Yeah, got it, got it. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. If it's too general, sorry. Um, yeah, we don't have anything more advanced, unfortunately. Um, sometimes it's hard to to get those advanced tutorials out because they they can get really complex really fast. So. Um, oh, you yeah. found it too advanced. Oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. I'm sorry, Peter. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if Andrew and I can answer that question specifically, but yeah, I, I think from a, you know, if it, from a career perspective, if you're looking to work in React, I think, you know, vanilla JavaScript, I think is super helpful because what we've learned and being in this industry for a while, depending on, you know, where you are in your career, you'll know that like, Ember was a kind of bleeding edge for a while, then Angular, then React, then, right, there's there's going to be some evolution that tries to build upon both the syntax, developer experience, and also, like, how extendable things are. So um, I think, you know, having really solid JavaScript foundation is going to help you apply those to any technologies, right? So that'll help you apply, you know, even mobile development now, which is something we do a lot with React Native, you know, that's JavaScript based. And there's other libraries out there too. So I think, ha you know, having a firm foundation in in plain JavaScript, super helpful. And then, you know, obviously each library has its quirks and syntax changes and how they do componentization and all that, that stuff. But um, from a, you know, front, if your goal is not to be a React developer, but a front end developer, you know, having a solid foundation in 
in JavaScript is super helpful. And then obviously if you want to specialize and really focus more on React given the climate of development, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. And I know not, not everyone, um, you know, depending on the team that you're on, if it's a startup or if it's a corporate innovation team or whatever it might be, um, you might have someone dedicated to test writing in addition to like test driven development. So um, what kind of tutorials do I need to, um, yeah, just another, what kind of tutorials do I need to look for, whether it can be just Jest or anything, it has to be Jest and React since I work with React. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps we'll we'll get some good tutorials. I know we've we've carved out many um, learning paths for and tracks for teams here at Headway, and then also for some of our client teams as well. So, okay. Yeah, that's helpful. You're still looking for your first job. All right. Um, Peter, um, do you want to just email ahoy at headway.io, and then we can uh, we can make sure to get you an answer. And get you some some direction some there. resources yeah yep awesome um looks like we have a question from alex alex was asking um notice headway's stack is heavily react and not other frameworks is that by choice or due to the use cases i would say a little bit of both um you know heavily react uh, we do a lot of web and mobile dev and obviously there's other things there's um ionic is is out there as well you know you can use other frameworks to to bridge the gap we're also doing a lot in no code not necessarily from a development standpoint but from visual development and you know really leaning leaning into that but um react uh i would say has been a tool of choice for a while we're also doing a lot now with phoenix and elixir um, so Phoenix Live View and, and being able to write um, front end code without the complexity of React, but with um, a lot of the specificity that we need. And I can't speak a, a lot deeper than that um, on it, but you know that specifically mm -hmm. um, is is a technology we've used. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of projects where we're doing React and React Native, uh, you know, React on the web, React Native on mobile, where we do get that kind of cross function. Um, between the two to, to a certain extent. So, yeah, it's cool to see a lot of development questions coming in that we can't answer because it's I wonder makes me wonder if we should have a um, maybe not maybe not weekly, but maybe we could start off monthly just to open office hours for development uh, specifically and have folks from our development team uh, be available to answer questions. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, I think we can jump in uh, to another question. I'm not sure if um, Selena's quite ready yet, but um, we can jump into another question from from Reddit that I can share up. All right. I think this one's actually pretty pretty good. Um, so this one is I'm jumping to the bottom one, Andrew, in Notion. Um, so what questions should you ask before joining a very new startup as a co-founder? Um, so they share, to be clear, I've already had plenty of discussions and asked all the questions that I've had had um, throughout this process. I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything else. Um, does anyone have questions that they typically ask before joining a startup, especially in a senior executive co-founder role? Um, we've gone through the technology, market entry, long-term growth, financial projections, funding and investors, equity, pretty much it seems like everything. Um, but yeah, Andrew, I don't know what your thoughts are on like if there's any any things um, that he he or she should be looking into. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like you've covered quite a bit uh, of questions so far, so I don't want to cover anything too too specific in those. I think a big um, a big part of it is just like, hey, when things go wrong, how do you handle conflict? Like, I, I think the biggest area that I that we see um, founding teams <laughs> is just role and expectations, you know, like not creating clear enough roles or not cl creating clear enough expectations between each other around working hours, working styles. Like, I think a lot of um, where I go uh, before joining a team is like, what are the core values and the principles that guide the team? Like, how do you communicate well with each other? Um, because things are going to come up, things are going to go wrong, things are going to go not as planned, and how you can respond and adapt to that together, I think, is really important. So a focus on 
you know, we, we talk about this a lot at Headway, but like showing up as a full person, not trying to feel like you have to put a mask on to, to work, um, which pardon the pun giving COVID, but like, but, you know, put a mask on and not essentially show up as yourself. And, you know, we've done a lot of stuff. I think we talked about this in a previous um, session, but um, dare to lead and, and really like, how do we rumble with vulnerability and, and be really direct with each other so that we, we're not building resentment or we're not, you know, catastrophizing, creating stories about um, people on a team. So I think like a big part is aligning on values and, and what you believe in the principles of how you communicate. The other thing would just be like week to week expectations of each other. Um, you know, we, we subscribe to the EOS model, um, which some startups do and a lot of agencies do, which is the entrepreneurial operating system. And so we have a weekly L10 with like all departments and with our leadership team every week to really bubble up issues. So I think having a plan in place for how you um, how you adapt to those issues, how you solve them, who has ultimate say in particular you know, departments, I think is important, especially if you're looking at a senior executive and co-founder role. And then I think, you know, what happens if somebody wants out, right? As much as no one wants to think about that or, or think about that scenario, um, you know, when, <laughs> are there any signals or, or reasons that people can keep in their, in their head or um, I guess occurrences that, that, that might come up where somebody feels like it's not worth it to them or, um, you know, hey, runway hits a certain level, like they can't, they can't take on that sort of risk anymore. And I think that uh, just understanding that going into it, I think is important. The other thing uh, asked before joining a startup would be, so it sounds like you talked about uh, funding and investors and equity, um, but really understanding what what the valuation is of the stock that you're doing. And I've seen a lot of founders not do this with early companies where they don't file an 83B election, which is just a tax form, essentially that you're going to pay tax on the stock value today versus later. Because if for some reason, let's say your vesting uh, schedule was four years and you didn't have the money to exercise the options, essentially pay the tax at, at a future date, um, you would essentially forfeit those options back into the company. And so just understanding more of the financial ramifications there, and this isn't legal or tax advice, but just something I've seen um, in founders that I know very closely um, who have had to forfeit their hard-earned equity, you know, that they got from the company because they couldn't cover the tax bill because the valuation of the company was so high when they left. So making sure you have a plan in place there that um, you understand how shares are vested, how to exercise your options and, you know, if the 83B is a good or bad idea for you, um, depending on the current valuation. So, but it sounds like you're thinking about all the right things and you've asked a lot of questions about, um, you know, the business itself, financial projections, all, all of those things. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. Awesome. Thanks for sharing all that stuff. I think, um, hopefully those are some, some different perspectives than, uh, he's currently, uh, than they've currently, uh, looked into. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Somebody did ask um, uh, if we have any open positions on our team. So I shared a link in the comments there to our careers page. You can see that all the open positions we have available. We are look, looking to hire uh, and grow this year. Um, so be sure to check it out and, and apply. And um, and even if you know you're not a good fit right now, doesn't mean you won't won't be a good fit in the future. So you know, always always keep checking in, and we'll always follow up with folks and and share new opportunities. All right. Actually, we have a question from Alex. All right. Awesome. Um, how do you guys bridge the gap of talent? I noticed the positions advertise are senior positions. Do you offer training and mentorship like NetGuru College? Yeah, that's a good question. So we we actually have some folks on our team that went through our apprenticeship. So actually, Tommy, our first developer, went through like the unofficial apprenticeship. Um, and you know, we've, we've looked into that. We have actually designers on our team that went through the apprenticeship as well and started as career switchers from graphic design into product design and from kind of a background in development into, you know, an, a true full stack developer. Uh, but something that we're really trying to, you know, focus on um, the way that the clients we work with and, and the teams we work with right now, we, we really have a lot of need for, for senior talent. Um, and so that's why a lot of our postings lean that way is because a lot of companies that we work with bring us in to be the experts and to really help and guide their teams. And, and a lot of cases for our clients, we're doing peer programming, we're doing peer design, we're teaching best practices as we go. And so um, a lot of the roles that we have are 
contribute uh, contributor roles, but also like that teaching and mentorship role for our clients. And so that's why to date, a lot of our um, positions have been more senior, but definitely something that, you know, we're, we've worked on, um, you know, and we're based in Green Bay, which isn't a huge tech hub. So there, I think there's a big opportunity for us. And we've talked about this internally, but to have more of a, a formal apprenticeship where people can get exposure and, and uh, ability to work alongside us with with our clients in a you know in a paid way and then also get spun back out into the community so all things that um you know that we're passionate about teaching and we used to um hold a hold a code school called code convoy along with some partners here in green bay um to really help identify and um share the craft of software development to people in high school and also college and and learn more about it so um, definitely something that we're looking more into and uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, I haven't heard of NetGuru College. I'm familiar with NetGuru. Um, but yeah, I appreciate the, the question and definitely something that, you know, is on our mind and on our hearts for sure of, of how we can help teach more people because all of us are, uh, I say this in like other videos, but I think we're all very focused on, on other people. And that's one of our core values of like, how do we help? Um, our clients, the crew, like everybody on our team, how do we help our customers and, and also how do we help the community? So. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. I appreciate you, Alex. Um, too kind. Um, all right. Selena's back with us. So I added Selena back in. Hello. 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 Welcome back. Hi, Selena. How's it going? Let me, uh, Oh, okay. It's asking for permissions again. Let me make sure I got this. I'm trying to share a screen. Yeah, so if you share your screen, I'll be able to add it in. Uh, uh, yeah. Here, so it'll show up on that backstage type thing. Okay, so uh, it wants to give permissions, which says quit and reopen. So I'm pretty sure it's about to kick me out, and I'm going to come back in. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right, so see you in a minute. Sounds good. <laughs> well, awesome. I think... Um, I don't know if we have any other questions, but I think that helping uh, Selena out might, might be the last thing we do because we're getting close to, to noon uh, central here. So top of the hour. Um, but yeah, we appreciate everybody coming in today, asking questions. And if if you're joining us every week, we definitely appreciate it. It's, uh, it's cool to see. All right. Is it working this time? <laughs> I think so. Can there we go. I see it. Yeah. So uh, I'll, I can add it in. Cool. You get the crazy um, yeah, infinity yeah. view. <laughs> the acid trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you should be seeing mm -hmm. my table example here. All right. And let me see if I can get some more room here. Guess not. All right. So um, I've got this relatively simple, you know, three rows. And then I've got this header which I've made as a row, right? So in order for me to align this column to the header, I have to start doing fixed width, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm trying to, sorry, oh, if you could okay. click yeah. back into there. I'm just trying to look at some of the, sure. the rows. So, so the so, row, it's, the row itself. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's go through it uh, on this side instead. So, row one headers. Yep. Right or sort whatever. Right, and then each row has about ten cells in it or ten columns, and I'm just trying to align these yeah. to the headers. I've tried it the other way of not doing rows, but doing columns instead, you know, which is basically like, it's like putting a bunch of drop downs next to each other. So they, they grow sideways and they grow down, but then you have to align the cells in the columns. So right. this will. So, so I think the, the one thing that we might do differently, because your, your main row isn't a component, right? So you're moving each cell um so you're i mean you're like let's take the first row yeah that says emergency on it okay that that row is not a component so meaning if you like moved emergency over woman's health wouldn't move over or is it 
Uh, like if I try to move this to here? No, if you try to, if you just try to, um, I guess maybe increase the padding in auto layout there from four to, let's say, sixteen. Yeah, that's that auto layout is for just that cell, right? And then the row has its own auto layout. Yeah, I think the thing I'm looking at is the row isn't necessarily a, yeah. So the row isn't necessarily a component. So what I would recommend is wrapping this component and then duplicating it for the rows underneath so that really you just have a, um, a primary or a master component um, that controls the layout of all the other all the other rows below if that makes sense right but but doesn't that break when you suddenly go oh this one is that only works if they're all the same no no it should it should work because then you would you would have auto layout inside of that row itself and then have the padding contained around it so that your um your height could grow Okay, I'm I'm not sure that I'm understanding because I have a as a row, and and you're saying if I toss that, do this, right, and then, and then go. Okay, and then I take this and I go. Uh, yeah, and the, and so then you would be yep. All right. So how do I line the header up? So essentially, you know, you would just control it once versus before you had to do it for every row. Um, so you would just align the header with that. So what we've done in some scenarios uh, to, to keep those tied together is have a parent component for each header style. Um, we actually break them out into number of columns so we'll we'll create row items based on the number of rows that we have um, okay. so let's say hey this table has five rows this header is a five header um or a five yeah a five header sure sorry five columns so this yeah this, this row is <laughs> I, I five columns you. this header is five columns and then create uh -huh. one for six and create one for seven and eight and so you can start to right. build build out a more robust you know just example of each one of these where right. you're saying hey you know take the parent level and and really with auto layout now you can do it a lot easier you used to have to mm -hmm. create independent components but you could essentially create one mm -hmm. component with let's say 10 columns and then mm -hmm. just remove those columns so the instance that you swap out is just hiding the unused yeah i, I think it's it's difficult because because there's no true flex box you know in in reality if i look at the the web page, this column would grow and the rest wouldn't. And it's flexible enough that I can like, I can change the content. And instead of always just bouncing to the next line, it knows like, oh, I have this much room. And then it, it widens that column. And gotcha. I guess, I guess what I'm <laughs> at this point, just lamenting is like, <laughs> there's no real table functionality in in Figma, it doesn't really do tables. And it's, right? Like if there's no real flex spots and there's no real tables, so I should maybe stop trying to, like I'm yeah. looking for the flexibility of real tables <laughs> and maybe right. that's my mistake. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a way for you to allow that to flex per row, you know, or, or per the, the contents Right. Let me let me see. Like, if I can pull up the. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't even know if I have. No, oh, this is you. Uh -oh. Yeah, it's not even running. Um, uh, uh, Cause I I have. I'm basically working backwards and trying to create a table that I've made a long time ago in Figma. Oh, mm -hmm. uh oh, StreamYard taking all my resources. Come on. 
I've I've tried sharing StreamYard on Zoom. Imagine how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I t- yeah, I I spent like two days trying to get OBS to work in Zoom, and I got it working, but it just was like one frame per second. Like, All right, well. So so yeah, so here's the real table, and you know, when you resize it, that's kind of what I'm looking for is at least getting this one column to be like, oh, that I'll just resize that one. This one will fill, you know, this name column will fill the area and the rest I'll have a fixed size. And I couldn't even get that really going. It's so yeah. I, I feel like what you're saying is the reality of working in Figma is it's not that flexible. So you, you have to basically make a component with different variants that have like one, two, three, four columns in it. Yeah, and that's I mean, as close you, as you can get. If your goal is to fix with all those other column or all those other um, data objects and then have the name flexible, you should. There should be a way for you to do that because you have those different yeah. constraints that you can introduce. Um, so right. it would just be working on making sure you know all the other ones are fixed with the other one is you know fill to right with which, and set to set to scale right. Yeah, which w- works work which I think should work great until you get that one where it's like, oh, this one's longer. Now I've got to go back to all of these and change their width because suddenly like, oh, well, you forgot that one string. Yeah, I think that's the same thing in in dev, right? If like if you were to uh, collapse this down a little bit, women's health Uh would wrap before everything else, even though you Uh wanted on Uh one line. Right. Um, so yeah, at some point you have to choose the width, right? It doesn't have, it doesn't right. have all the flex control, you know, like that, if you're, yeah, there yeah. are, there are minor quirks. You, you should be able to get close though. And, and it's part of that, this whole concept really about workflow and understanding that it is a mock-up. It's not a real table. I'm doing a handoff. I'm not, I'm not handing you a component. I'm handing you a mock-up of a component and right. we we still have to talk through, look, when you stretch it, this is what I want it to do because I, I clearly can't do that unless I build a table. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think sometimes community, yeah. I mean, if you can't play with the resizing and, um, you know, in that, in that particular row of mm-hmm. those different elements, like if you can't create a, you know, essentially you'd be creating groups with you know the cells that you have and then the auto layout which looks like you have um but you should be able to have you know that that resizing happen as well right. so you can see fix width here if you were to change that to fill fill container um all the other it also all looks the other, to all all the other right. the width of all the other ones first as well so right right um, you'd need to make sure each one of those was configured got it yeah. In order, yeah. In order to, so, so it is possible. It might not. It might get to ninety-five percent of the way there. Right. Yeah. Right. That, and that's yeah. The way there. I, that's what I was hoping for. The hundred percent. Like, there's some secret hundred percent sauce that's going to get me real tables and Figma. Uh, yeah. And I, I think that's a that's a pipe dream. But uh, but thanks. I, I appreciate there, it. And there might yeah, there might be a plugin that just plugs. I was just going to say. I'm not yeah. sure. No, yeah, there are there are are plugins that that build them, but then they're all fixed cells. Hmm. Yeah. Right. And even the text, like if you have a long string, it, they just clip it. And it's just like, well, what was the point? It, you know, if you have a pure number data table, it's great. But when you have highly stylized tables, it's there's nothing there yet. Yeah, and I'm actually hoping Figma at some point pulls some of the, you know, pull some Chrome into Figma so you can just start doing markup and have the Chrome engine running <laughs> so I can just make a table. Right. Yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate thanks, you. Yeah. All right. Take care, man. Take care. All right. Awesome. Well, that, that's that's time. It's, it's 1201. We got to wrap it up. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I shared a link in the comments there to the events we have coming up. We have one tomorrow. Um, we have some uh, in the next two weeks. Um, and we're also planning for April already. So uh, 
we're really excited to share everything with all of you. Um, thanks again for joining us. And be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. You know, smash that like button like everybody says on YouTube. Um, I don't say that, but I just said it anyway. Um, but uh, thanks again, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, is there anything else you want to share before we leave? No, there's not. Just appreciate everyone's questions. And, you know, like I said, if you have outstanding questions or we didn't get to it, feel free to email us at just ahoy at headway.io. It's on our website as well. Um, it's a comment in here from uh, about 20 minutes ago. So hoping yeah. to, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hoping uh, we get you what you need to keep moving and, and that's helpful. So yeah, awesome. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thanks, everyone.